Hey Stampers, Kim from StampingAtPerfection.com. Welcome to my craft room. So I decided that I've, I've been playing around with all different kinds of watercoloring techniques and um, trying to, you know, see what else is out there in the crafting world. And I've been having a lot of fun. So I would like to try a new product for me. I realize these have been out there for a while, but I recently learned about Distress Crayons, and Stampin' Up! had something similar to them many years ago that I, and I really love them, I can't even remember what they were called, but they were really creamy and um, fun to use, and it, they really lent themselves well to doing watercolor techniques. So Tim Holtz uh, has this Ranger product called Distress Crayons that I thought I would play with today. And um, these are like, they look like pens, and when you open them up, they open, they go up like, basically like a lipstick, and they're very creamy to play with. So I would like to create a little project on a little canvas, and I'm not sure if this has been gessoed or not, but since it's August, I have a Gina K, A Year of Flowers. I watched someone uh, watercolor a um, beautiful sunflower yesterday. My husband and I went on the gallery walk in town because it was first Friday, and every Friday the art galleries in town stay open. Um, a little bit later, so I I thought, you know, I really love that sunflower that she created, so I, I'd like to actually try this with some sunflowers. Now, she watercolored hers, and it just looked so simple, so I thought, you know, I'll try this out, and I thought it would be fun to try this on a little canvas. Uh, these little canvases, if you seal them, can be used for um, posters, or you can, you know, hang a few on a wall or above your desk or whatever. You know, they're just fun. So I'm going to stamp this, and I'm using Stazon ink, and hopefully it'll come out all right because I probably should have put it in my Misty. We'll see. There we go. Oops, not that great. We'll see what we can do with the um, with the crayons to cover that up. We'll take care of that. So, oh, it's really sticky. I'm gonna try to make a little scene here. There are leaves I could add, and I probably will add a sentiment, but I haven't decided about that yet. Something inspirational. And I'll do some kind of background. So I use stays on ink because for projects like that, like I have these, I have this tumbled marble tile that I actually stamped on, and then I colored in with pastels, actually chalks. And, um, this is stays on ink, and this is exactly look, what it looked like when I stamped it. And this this is at least six years old. I actually have a video of um, some of those tiles somewhere on my YouTube channel, but it's very old. All right, now I need a um, brush, so I'm going to keep all my brushes in front of me here. I'm not sure what size I'm going to want. Um, the eight and the ten round brush are my favorite ones. We'll see since I haven't done this before. I'm going to start actually with a brown and I have not played with these at all so I don't know what color I want. I'm going to start with vintage photo. There's so many browns to choose from. And I'm just going to I'm just going to dab I want it to make it look like texture. I'm just going to dab that and I'm going to get my brush nice and wet. So I've got a little cup of water up here and um, then I'm just going to use my brush and 
brush it out around the edges of that center. Do the same thing to all the rest of them. And I don't want too much water on here because I do want to, I kind of want to do uh, some kind of technique will, that will allow me to pull some of this brown into the yellows. Now you'll notice these came in packages of six and there are many packages of these. I believe there are 10 because I believe there are 60 colors altogether. There are, I know there are 60 distress oxide or there's 60 distress inks. Right now there's 48 distress oxides but they're coming out with the rest of the set. And the distress markers, there's also 60 of those. So I'm assuming there's 60 colors altogether. And um, I've just started playing with alcohol inks too for the first time. So I'm just really having fun learning all these new mediums. Like it's really kind of opening a whole new crafting world for me. So now I'm going to take this fossilized amber and I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Now this is a, I have a lot of water on that one. I might try this one. I'm just going to put a little bit in each of the petals right around the center. And this is, these are super creamy. Like if you've colored with crayons, these are even creamier than crayons. So now I'm just going to pull this down. And um, I'm getting chunks. I, maybe I'm pushing too hard. And I definitely have too much water there. It's easy to remove the water though. Now from what I understand, um, as long as these are wet, you can play with them. Once they dry, then they're permanent. Then you can put more color on top to create layers of colors, but once it's dry, that layer is permanent. So I'm just going to go around here. Okay. And I'm going to try to now just pull a little bit of this brown. from the center into the base of the petal, into the center of the petal where those lines are to kind of make it look darker in the center. Okay, so I'm going to let that one dry a little bit before I go on to the ones underneath and I'm going to just do the same things to the other ones. Maybe I'll add some of this orangey color. This is Rusty Hinge. Let's see what this looks like. Ooh, that one turns really hard. Okay, so I'll just put a little bit darker. Oh, I really like this. Actually, I'm thinking that Some of this would look pretty mixed into the center. I think I might add a little yellow to this because uh, so this is a pretty big brush for this. Let's see if I 
can make one side of this a little darker than the other. I kind of scribble this around a little to blend the orange and the yellows together a little bit. Okay. So far, I don't hate it. Okay, let's do something like this with this other one there. The less perfect for me, the better. And I'd like to put a little background, and I sort of like this peel paint color. I think this might be kind of fun. So I'm wondering, I think I'm going to try the peeled paint. I'll put the peeled paint down and then see if I can um, color over it. Alright, let's see what happens here. Now while I have this paint, this color paint on my paintbrush, I'm going to do the edges. I just feel like it gives it a finished off look when you do the edges. So I definitely want to put a sentiment over that. And some kind of texture. I have to figure out the texture. Alright, so I'm going to stop for a minute and I'm going to go find a sentiment that will fit here, that I like, that I find inspiring, and I'm going to let this dry, and then I'm going to tr bring the stencil back in and the sentiment and see if I can add some more interesting things. I've allowed the canvas to dry, and um, mostly it feels pretty dry. The, just maybe the center of this flower doesn't feel quite as dry as the other things, and I found a sentiment that I want to use, and um, I have this this all to new thoughts and reminders and it's got some fantastic sentiments I really like believe in the good of everything but um, it's a little too long and I don't like cutting apart my stamps I realize I could cut apart my stamps but I don't want to because I also have be yourself be beautiful be bold be loving be unique chase your dreams um, you might catch one I love that so I am I picked the um, be yourself and all of those things. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to heat emboss this. Um, so I'm using my Versamark and I'm hoping once again that I don't regret not using my um, Misty and stamping it more than once because this does have a lot of texture. So I want to get this in here. Just right. And the fun thing about these resist crayons is that, or these um, distress crayons, is that once you, once they're dry, like you can add more colors, you can pour your embossing powder on, and it should not stick to the rest of it because it's dry. It should only stick to that wet embossing paste. So I could layer other colors on top of this if I wanted to. Let's see. Where's my bring a scrap paper out here? have used black embossing powder or a shiny metallic. 
just want it to be fun. So I'm going to heat set this. All right, that looks good. Now I want to take, um, I want to try this again, just to give it a little bit of interest. And I'm going to, um, oh, it's warm. I picked this because I really liked the variety of sizes of these bubbles. I thought it was interesting. So I want to make sure I get some of the smaller ones along with some of the larger ones. Okay, and then I'm going to just use my finger and kind of smudge it because it's sort of, as I put it on there, it's sort of like hanging around the edge. So I'm just going to smush with my finger because you can, a lot of the techniques um, that people use these crayons for is like smooshing with their fingers. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Okay, not standing out too, too much, but it's standing out enough. I'm going to try heat setting this. And I want to just see if I can take my Sharpie marker, my Sharpie pen, and just add in some of these dots or if they'll just stand out too much. That's not too bad. Okay, so that looks kind of cool. And I actually think this, this, these little dots that I stenciled in have kind of a fun dimension to them. So this project was inspired by a um, a video I saw, I want to say on Simon Says website, but uh, it was quite a while ago, so I'm, I can't remember, but I think it's a really fun project. These little tiles, or these little canvases I got at my local craft store, and there were five in a package for, I don't know, less than three dollars and that was a pretty quick and fun project so the distressed crayons are super simple to use uh, just a wet paintbrush and instead of a paintbrush you could use your aqua painter so very simple this is totally dry now it's amazing like the whole thing is totally dry I can't smudge it I could spray this with clear um, lacquer or clear like a clear coat just to really set it and make sure um, nothing can happen to it, but it really doesn't need that, I don't think. Um, I did that with the the tumbled marble tile. You can kind of see the shiny finish on there. I took it outside and sprayed it um, once, I, I think just once, uh, with that, that clear um, spray. I don't even know, know what kind of was probably Rust-Oleum or something. But that's that. How fun is that? So this is the Gina K um, A Year in Flowers, Sunflower, and then this is the Alta New Thoughts and Reminders, um, Thoughts and Reminders Sentiment. I can spit that out. And then this is a, an Old Dilutions stencil. So that completes my project. Thanks for watching. Stop on my blog at stampingimperfection.com. Share this video with your friends, give it a like, and make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'll put some links for these products below. Thanks for watching.